Hi guys! Today we're continuing with our 3-1 notes. In today's notes, we're going to talk about what a solution to an inequality is. And we'll talk about uh, a numerical solution as well as a picture solution. So let's get started. In our first example, it gave us an inequality 2x plus 1 is greater than negative 3. And it wants to know if these two numbers are solutions to the inequality. Now, to tell if a number is a solution to actually any math problem, it doesn't have to be an inequality, it could be an equation. Um, to tell if something is a solution, you can always plug it in. If you plug it in and it gives you a true math statement, then you say, yes, it is a solution. And if it gives you a false math statement, and you say, no, it is not a solution. So let's try it. So I'm going to start with the number 3. We're going to plug each number in individually. I'm going to put the number 3 where the letter X is. And I'm going to do a little PEMDAS on the left-hand side. So 2 times 3 is 6. And 6 plus 1 is 7. And so now I have a math statement. And the math statement says 7 is greater than negative 3. Well, that's true. A positive number is greater than a negative number. Since this math statement is true, we say that 3 is a solution to this inequality. Now, inequalities are kind of special because they don't have just one answer. It's not like an equation where you get an answer of like x equals 3 and that's the only answer and you're like, okay, I'm done. That's it. Um, and so it's really important that even if the first one is true, you always do have to try the second one as well because the second one might also be true. So let's try the next number, negative 1. So I'm going to take negative 1. I'm going to plug it into the original problem where the x is, just like I did with the 3. And we'll do a little PEMDAS. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. This math statement now says negative 1 is greater than negative 3. Well, that's also true. So if you can't remember how negative numbers work, right, the ones that are closer to 0 for negative numbers are larger. So since 1 is closer to 0 than 3, then negative 1 would be the larger of the numbers. You could also draw a number line if you wanted to. On a number line, the numbers that are more to the right are greater, and the numbers that are more to the left are less. Okay, so since 3 is to the left, that is less than the negative 1. And so this statement is also true, which means that negative 1 is also a solution to this inequality. So it is possible on these problems that more than one number could be a solution. So again, it's very important that you're checking all of your answers. And as always, more than one number could be not a solution. <laughs> Let's take a look at a picture of all the solutions to an inequality. To represent all of the solutions of an inequality, we can draw a graph on a number line. In this example, we will be discovering what the inequality was that is represented by the picture. In our first picture, we have a closed circle that's colored in circle on the number negative 1. And we have some shading that starts at the circle and it goes all the way to the right-hand side. You'll notice at the end of the shading there's an arrow. That means that it keeps going and it doesn't stop. Anything that is colored in is considered to be a solution. So in this problem, the number negative 1 is a solution to the problem because it has a colored in circle on it. And everything to the right of negative 1 is also a solution since it's all colored in. So every number starting at negative 1 and getting bigger is a solution. To write an inequality for this, we need a variable. You can use any letter you want. I usually just use the letter x. We need an inequality, and we need a number. I'm going to use the letter x for my inequality. 
For the number, you want to use the number that the circle is located on. So in this question, that would be the negative 1. Since we're starting at the negative 1 and getting bigger, we're going to use a greater than symbol. You can also take a look at the way that the arrow is pointing. This arrow is pointing to the right. If we take that arrow and we just slide it down, that's the direction the inequality is going to go. So again, the direction that the arrow is going is also the direction your inequality can go. Now this is only true if you put your letter first and your number second. Now this says that x is greater than negative 1. That means that all of the solutions are bigger than negative 1. But the number negative 1 is also colored in. So I also want to include negative 1 as part of my answer. And I can do that by putting an or equal to underneath the inequality. And so the inequality that represents this first graph is x is greater than or equal to negative 1. Let's take a look at the next example. For the next example, I have a circle on the number 4, but it's not colored in. That means that the number 4 is not considered a solution to this problem. Next, I have some shading happening. It starts at the number 4, and it goes all the way to the left. And again, you'll notice that there's an arrow at the end. That means that it keeps going forever in that direction. And so in this problem, any number that is smaller than 4 is considered to be a solution including all of the fractions and decimals. So like 3.5, even like 3.9, that gets really, really close to the number 4, is considered to be a solution. Since the number 4 has an open circle that's not colored in, that means that the number 4 is not a solution. So everything getting really close to it is, but the number 4 itself is not. Just like on our previous problem, we need to start with a variable. You can use the letter x again if you want to. The number that you're going to choose is the number that has a circle on it. And in this problem, that's the number 4. Even though it's an open circle, we still use that number. The shading starts at the number 4, and it goes to the left. That means all the numbers smaller than 4. Or we can use the trick of looking at the arrow. So if we draw an over-exaggerated arrow, the arrow is pointing, again, to the left. And so we want our inequality also to point to the left. That's a less than symbol. This inequality right now says all the numbers that are smaller than 4 are solution. This is our final answer. Because of the open circle, we do not want to say that 4 is a solution. So we do not want an or equal to. So my final answer is x is less than 4. It's really important that you're getting the inequalities to go in the correct direction. So again, you can, um, you know, if you can remember which one is which, that's great. You can use a trick of looking at an over-exaggerated arrow to figure out which way it should be pointing. Less than will always point to the left. Greater than will always point to the right. So it's easy to remember less than left since they both start with the letter L. And then the other thing that I like to do for a less than symbol is I like to think of, you know, here's an L. And if we just squash it down a little bit, it looks like a less than symbol. So that's how I can remember less than. And I don't have a trick for greater than, but basically, if it's not less than, then it's greater than. So that's the trick for greater than. This concludes today's notes.